Hi, my name's Keith. In this video I'm going to be talking about the difference between S-Trigs and V-Trigs. What you probably know is that uh, older Moog synths, uh, definitely the Moog modulars, used uh, S-Trigs or shorting triggers and all other manufacturers basically used V-Trigs or voltage triggers. And how this came about here in the studio is I have two sounds, one from this Moog source and one from this ARP Odyssey and I wanted to layer them together. So the, uh, the ARP sound is a typical, you know, twangy um, type uh, nasally sound. And the Moog sound, of course, is the typical Moog bass. And what I want to do is layer them together so they, uh, they uh, you know, mix nicely. Um, now, what I want to do is be able to play just one of the keyboards, the uh, ARP, and I want the Moog to follow along. Now these are uh, pre-MIDI, so I can't use MIDI to do that, but they both do have uh, CV and uh, gate interfaces, so I should be able to, theoretically, just take the CV and gate out on the ARP and wire them directly into the Moog. Now, totally ignoring the uh, S-Trig versus V-Trig compatibility issue, uh, let me take some uh, straight through cables and I'll just connect them together like I said and we'll see what happens. So the two synths are now connected together via the CV and gate interface and as you can probably tell, the uh, Moog source is in some sort of drone mode, but interestingly enough, if I push a key down on the ARP, the Moog goes silent. And then when I lift up on the ARP, you can hear the Moog again. So it seems to be in some sort of inverse relationship, where if the ARP is on, the Moog is off, and vice versa. So obviously there's something wrong uh, with the, uh, the gate signals going between them. Let me hit the whiteboard and I'll show you what's going on. A V-trig is a voltage representation of the key down state of the synth. So if no keys are pressed down, uh, the V-trig level is at zero volts, or ground. As soon as you push a key down, it goes up to some uh, higher voltage level, typically plus five volts, and it stays there as long as you have a key pressed down. As soon as you release all the keys, it goes back down to zero volts, or ground. Now, an S-trig really isn't the voltage. It's actually a switch shorted to ground. So when there are no keys pressed down, it's really not connected to anything. It's kind of at a, a floating state. But when you push a key down, it shorts to ground, or zero volts. And it stays at that level until you release all the keys. And then it goes back up to that floating level, which means it's not really connected to anything. Now, if you look at the V-trig and the S-trig, you'll see that they're uh, inverted to each other. So when there's a key down and the V-trig is high, the S-trig is low, and vice versa. There's a one transistor inverter circuit that can be used to transform V-trigs into S-trigs, and using that, we can send S-trigs to the Moog source from the ARP Odyssey. Let me show you the schematic. This is the V-trig to S-trig uh, converter circuit. And if you're new to synthesizer electronics or you just want a really simple uh, project to, to build, I would suggest uh, understanding how this circuit works and building it into a cable. The theory is really easy and it's very simple to build. The V-trig signal comes in here on the left on the line mark tip and goes through this 10K uh, resistor, which I'll get back to in a moment, and then on to the base of this transistor. It's just a 2N3904. It's a very common NPN signaling transistor. And that signal is more, allows more than enough current to travel between the base and the emitter to completely saturate the transistor, which allows current to travel between the collector and the emitter. Now, because the emitter is tied to ground, the collector will be pulled down to within one diode drop of ground, or to about 0.5 to 0.7 volts. The collector voltage will also appear on the trigger line on the S-trig synth. And that voltage is close enough to ground that it considers it a trigger event. And the gate will turn on. Now back to the resistor. The purpose of the resistor is to limit the amount of current that can be drawn from the V-trig synth through the transistor and back through the ground. 
Without that resistor in place, uh, the amount of current drawn from the V-trig synth could be quite high, and it could cause drooping voltages, which could cause uh, uh, flaky triggers. It could also cause things to heat up, or even, depending on the design of the V-trig synth, could cause a failure. So that resistor is quite important. Now let's build this into a cable. I have all of my tools and components laid out, so now is a good time to talk about connectors. Uh, on the ARP Odyssey, um, it uses 3.5 millimeter mini jacks, so I have this 3.5 uh, millimeter plug connector here. It's the same uh, type of connector you see on Eurorack synths. The Moog Source, on the other hand, uses quarter inch connectors, so I've got a quarter inch connector here. And because the barrel on the quarter inch connector is so much bigger, I'm going to be using it um, to build uh, the circuit into, so the circuit will be built into this bigger connector here. With older Moog synths, you might also see this type of connector. It's a two-prong uh, Cinch Jones connector. This particular one has a pin and then a, f uh, a, f a flat contact, uh, but the Moog ones have two uh, flat spade uh, contacts. Another option, instead of building one long cable, is to build a short adapter cable like this one with a male on one end and a female on the other. I used uh, quarter inch connectors here because I tend to have a lot of them in the studio. Um, and what you can do here is you can uh, put uh, cable adapters on the end or connect this in line with a straight through cable to make the uh, V-trig to S-trig converter cable that you need. It can be a bit tricky to solder the cable together, so it really helps to have a lot of patience. This is the V-trig end, so it's not that complicated. The braid is soldered to the sleeve, and the center conductor is soldered to the tip. This is the S-trig side of the cable, and it's where you install the transistor and the resistor. And I won't lie to you, it's going to be very tricky to get everything shoved in there. One piece of advice, though, is uh, for the resistor to pre-solder it to the base of the transistor and also the center conductor on the cable. And you can see a little bit of uh, yellow shrink tubing here that I added uh, so that it doesn't short out. You can also see the collector lead on the transistor bent up through the tip lug on the S-trig connector. It's always a good idea to test what you're working on before you put your tools away. Uh, and to do that, uh, plug the V-trig end of the cable into a synth and probe the S-trig end of the cable with a continuity meter. With no keys down, it should be an open circuit so you won't hear a beep. When you push a key down, it should show a short circuit and you should hear the beep. So now uh, both synthesizers are connected together again, but this time we're using the V-trig to S-trig converter cable. And as you can hear, they trigger together and they layer really well. Now just to show how the triggering works, I'll uh, turn the uh, oscillators down on the ARP. So that's both. And the oscillators on the ARP are down, so I'm triggering the Moog from the ARP, and then I'll turn the ARP oscillators back up. Here we go. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.